Hello YouTube, welcome back to Nutkin Farm. It's been a while since I've been here so I'm welcoming myself back as well. Um, I'm a bit of a fair weather friend to my own farm because in the rain there's just nothing you can really do except wait for it to stop raining. I've come back on a somewhat momentous occasion. Uh, the momentous occasion being uh, we're actually going to have our first harvest next week and normally the first harvest for the season starts in late February or early March sort of depending on when your when your varieties of nuts drop but harvesting has been literally impossible and I, I've had this confirmed by my grower liaison at Wally's that har harvesting has been literally impossible for just about everyone and they're only just getting on their land now and as you can see up close there are nuts all over the place. Green nuts, brown nuts, all kinds of nuts uh, ready to be picked up. That's gonna be quite a lot um, to pick up for the harvesting contractors when they come. It'll be interesting to see what machines they bring. I hear that they've been using lightweight machines for harvesting this time because you can get around without too much damage in the lighter weight machines like uh, the Rob Mac harvesters, uh, the Nifty Nabbers, uh, the kind of machines that are built on the back of um, zero turn mowers or, or small four wheel drive mowers. But um, maybe I'll get some footage of that and show you uh, in, a, in a video very soon now. But there's a, a lot to pick up and I'm hoping the harvesters don't get too gunked up with weeds and twigs and that sort of stuff because it then becomes quite a lengthy and expensive exercise to harvest. Now you can see from where I'm walking that anywhere that isn't covered over by trees has uh, has got a decent coating of grass. Um, this is fairly mild because obviously I've been mowing this area but there's some other areas up in block six where basically in order to get at any nut at all gonna have to slash and then mow and there's plenty of sets of tires involved in that exercise going over the nuts on the ground and you might lose oh look conservatively a third of them but um, you're gonna get absolutely zero unless you do it meanwhile my 344s here uh, busy preparing out of season flower um, which is what they were doing actually a month ago when I was looking so it looks like they've in, entered a steady period of out of season flowering uh, look flowering in June may turn into nut you never know but it's not really a good sign and it's again confirmation that 344 is really a, a bit of a problem variety particularly once it gets a bit tall and uh, is no longer a star performer in terms of yield. Uh, people then stop forgiving its foibles and start cursing it. So there it is. But the trees do look healthy and, you know, obviously everything's fairly green and lush from the rain. But, um, yeah, the, pro the project now for everyone is to get things under control. And it wouldn't surprise you that the the demand on contractors, everyone through to the processes is intense. Um, I was told that Summerland House, uh, the largest processing facility in the Northern Rivers, interesting story behind it, it's run by the house with no steps and in conjunction with macadamia farmers, it's run entirely by people with a disability, all of whom have full real jobs, it's not a sheltered workshop but they process all the nuts and colour sort them and dehusk them and and uh, get rid of the rejects on behalf of um, most of the macadamia farmers, farmers in the Northern Rivers. Well, with everyone getting their harvest in now, they're apparently booked out till the end of June for processing and there's a waiting list after that. And so that's how much crop is coming in in a rush for processing now. But um, the subject of this video is a little different and it's um, something I'd, I've never really talked about before and that is our professional association, the Australian Macadamia Society. Um, it's going through a period of change. Um, the outgoing CEO, Jolion Burnett, has um, developed 
a plan over time for ma marketing macadamias, wanting to put more resources into the selling, the growth of markets around the world of macadamias, and um, part of that was a um, uh, was was foundation of a world society or world organisation for macadamias, which um, is just um, just got off the ground. But as part of that, um, the proposal to members that's that's being circulated for feedback at the moment is a very big change to the nature of the society and one which really is it's never been done in its history ever ever since the macadamia industry started organizing in australia generally and and, and this is why you should care i guess um because you know your voice in the industry um is is something that matters I guess we should start with what the what the Australian Macadamia Society does for growers. Um, first and foremost, it's a source of knowledge um, and research. They do help um, devote research funding from our macadamia industry levy into areas that improve productivity for farmers, um, advocate for our industry when we need things like, for example, flood assistance, um, you know, be a, a representative of our industry on wider nut organizations like uh, you know nut producers of the world and um, they they can sort out disputes between growers they they sometimes mediate disputes they assist people coming into the industry with advice um, they provide basically tech support for farmers sometimes where they'll help you put you in touch with um, more experienced farmers who can help inexperienced farmers it's kind of like myself um, with issues not not services I've ever accessed myself because I've got my own little network of contacts now um, and I'm lucky to have some experienced neighbors but um, they're they're there as a support organization an advocacy organization and they they put out a magazine four times a year which um, apart from some advertising which is also quite useful to us um, is very good in informing us of what to do and what the trends are for things like pests, diseases, uh, crop management, pruning techniques. The latest, the latest uh, wisdom that they can give us is in those pages. Uh, they also provide an online library um, which dates back to the 60s and I've, I've delved all the way back in my research um, of farms just to see how macadamia farming was done in the past and comparing it with the present. There is an absolute wealth of data that would take you a good month to read if you sat down and, and read all of it. And you get all that for the princely sum of about 350 dollars a year if you're a grower and there are other levels of membership like an associate membership which means you're, you're just a friend of the industry and you don't have a farm at all um, and there are memberships for processors for um, marketing people um, all different sort of levels of of membership and um, that's great it's all reasonably harmonious and the uh, ams is or was until recently based in dawson street lismore until its funny little building got entirely inundated by the floods uh, apparently the owner of the building is not rebuilding that and the society itself has to move headquarters so that's what it does and that's what it offers growers. Um, I'm a happy member, I'm happy with what it provides for the price that it provides. Um, and I don't think I would farm macadamias without some source of official information like that. And my agronomist is great, but you can't rely entirely on what an agronomist tells you because they don't have time to tell you everything, uh, amongst, other, amongst other things. So what changes are being proposed? Well, here, here they are in a nutshell. At the moment, there's about 800 and something members of the Macadamia Society. And so they claim that there's about 800 macadamia farmers in Australia. You buy your growers membership on voting matters in terms of representation and everything else. There's one vote, one value. You, everyone gets one vote. Um, under the proposed changes, um, they're going to change the number of votes people get and the number of, and the amount of membership fees you pay in proportion. So up to 20 hectares of macadamias, you pay $400. 
which is a, a slight increase in the fee, you know, but not, you know, a huge amount. Um, but then it scales upwards so that beyond about 220 odd or 250 odd hectares of planted macadamias, your membership fee will instead of four, $350 be $5,000. And there's a cap at either end. So the minimum you pay is 400, the maximum you pay is 5,000. And your vote allocation then becomes tied to the amount of dollars you spend on membership. So a $5,000 membership is 5,000 votes and so on. Now, that's going to have a distorting effect or, you know, some might say a correctional effect if they're in support of the moves on um, who makes up the Australian Macadamia Society uh, and who holds sway in terms of votes, which then goes on to influence who the directors will be and what, you know, what they'll spend their money on. And... Um, you know, the first reaction everyone has, of course, is it's a grab for more money, and it absolutely is. Um, Jolly on Burnett's been making the case that we do need to spend more money marketing our product. The price of macadamias has fallen uh, in, in, in response to a lot of things, but mostly COVID and the war. But they need to drive new demand to meet all the new supply coming online for all these baby macadamia trees that are being planted. So they want more money from the growers, and this is one way to get it. But in return, you know, they're giving more influence to people who grow more macadamias. So rather than saying all farmers have an equal voice, they're sort of saying all nuts have an equal voice, if you like. Um, what could that potentially do? Well, there's a couple of things that, that sort of need to be taken into account, particularly when you do this with any professional society and I've been a member of a few over the years um, when you change voting rights away from one vote one value and the voices of in this case small farmers get discounted relative to the voices of large farmers you can have a, a bit of a disconnect in that people will feel disenfranchised even if they're not being disenfranchised I think they said in the AMS magazine that small farmers, at the end of the day, small farmers will still end up with 30% of voting rights on their calculation of what, yeah, what, hectare, what hectares people have. But it's a lot more than 30% at the moment, and, and um, we don't know how much because they don't tell us what the current distribution is. But um, the small farmers, they claim, will still end up with only, uh, will still end up with 30% of all voting rights. The difficulty there, I, I guess, is that the, the interests of small and large farmers do differ sometimes. Right? The large operations can afford a more scientific approach. They can afford to be at the cutting edge, and there's not much new that the AMS magazine tells them, for example. So the magazine would be, predictably, less of a priority for a large farmer than it would be for a small farmer who depends on that as a a source of um, industry information. Often the latest techniques are passed down from large farmers to small farmers and um, that's something that you know large farmers might not be as interested in doing as opposed to small farmers sharing information with each other. The other um, potential imbalance is a geographic one. The small farmers are all over the place but Historically, or for, for historical reasons, there are more small farmers here in New South Wales on the northern rivers than there are in Bundaberg, where there are huge acreages, absolutely massive macadamia farms planted. And um, so, you know, while the AMS has always been based in New South Wales, as far as I can tell, it's always been based in Lismore, uh, and they're looking for a new home, one wonders whether that will be a trigger point to change the headquarters from um, New South Wales to Queensland. Now, I'm sure they'd have a member services officer in New South Wales, probably based in Lismore or somewhere close to it. But there are, there are advantages with things being headquartered uh, near where sort of the majority of members are. And, you know, there is a potential... 
obviously a threat of a, of a disconnect between, you know, the everyday communications and going out to see members on farms that comes with having a, an office locally and one that might be far away in the middle of very big farms which have very different interests in terms of, you know, cultivation, irrigation, uh, marketing, um, different use of pesticides, um, and different rules between Queensland and New South Wales, for example. Now, I guess I'm approaching this from the bias of a New South Wales farmer, not wanting things to change, but, um, you know, I haven't heard huge complaints from Queensland farmers about the current um, system. Now, there, there are arguments both ways, of course. You know, if the advocacy of the AMS means that the price of macadamias goes up by 50 cents a kilo, well, the benefit of that will be felt much more by the large farmers than it will by the small farmers. The proportion's the same, and I'm sure everyone will welcome a price rise, but, you know, 50 cents a kilo on a 100 ton farm is of course a lot more than you know dollars than 50 cents a kilo on a 10 ton farm and um so you know on that level you can say well the membership needs to change because you know the more money that goes into marketing the more the big farmers benefit so there's your argument for the bigger farmers paying more for membership but when it comes to representation and the amount of votes on committees and that sort of stuff is that necessary too? Does that have to go with it? Or can we still preserve a system where, you know, if you're a member, you get a vote and no macadamia farmer is considered more valuable or more important than anyone else? Um, I've spoken to a couple of people about this, um, but I'm yet to form a view myself. I have to say my preliminary view is against any change uh, because I think the existing system does work uh, and I think the marketing efforts, um, as, as Peter Fraser said in the Macadamia show a few episodes back, the marketing efforts really um, don't require only cash. They require a bit of intelligence, a bit of nous, and the Australian macadamia industry has made some fantastic marketing coups on the membership funds that it already has um, in the membership structure that it already has. And so, you know, when it the comes right to people, of... I'm not sure changing voting structures uh, or even fee levels necessarily does that for you. Um, and I'm not sure that, you know, other macadamia producing countries around the world leverage their own farmers quite as much as Australian farmers get leveraged for for, uh, for development fees and, uh, and levies. So it's an interesting topic. And, um, you know, if you're a member of the AMS, and if, if you're not, I encourage you to join. If you're a member of the AMS, I would, you know, take a close look at what they're proposing and whether or not these changes feel right to you. I'm not sure there's a right or wrong answer to this, um, I'm inclined to leave things the way they are, but um, you know the, the management of the AMS is very keen on changing to that new model, and um, there will obviously be some thoughts either way, and there may be a divergence of opinions here between small farmers and big farmers. Now, to anyone from a big farm watching this, I know Trent, Trent, one, uh, Trent, you're one of my most loyal subscribers. I'm not trying to offend you or any other person who works in a big farm. Uh, I just want to find the way forward that actually benefits everyone without uh, offending anyone too much. And um, when you come up against those sorts of issues, equality is always is always a pretty good um, pretty good way of um, well, it's a pretty good start anyway. And uh, any modifications that get made after that, well, you know, who knows? Maybe there are other answers. The other answers they're not putting us to us. Maybe they need to quota of directors between Queensland and New South Wales. Uh, maybe they need to have two offices. If they're going to get more money from us, maybe they can run two offices. One in, one in Lismore in the traditional territory, and one up in Bundaberg. Maybe those are other answers. Uh, maybe they can make the society a federation where there are New South Wales and Queensland boards. We don't know quite 
you know, what might be the best outcome, but all we do know at the moment is that there's just one outcome being pitched to members, and that uh, that being the one I've described to you. So have a think about that. By all means, put a comment in the section below about whether you think the proposal by the AMS is the right way to go forwards. I should add as a parting point, um, there's a consideration of the AMS changing its name from Australian Macadamia Society uh, to Ausmac or, or some other more modern name. Um, that one, I already know my feelings about that. I'm against it. Um, there's no, you know, all, all that would mean is a costly rebranding at the grower's expense. And there's nothing wrong with a bit of retro in saying that something's a macadamia society. Um, you know, because a solicitor, I used to belong to the Law Society and it didn't harm anybody. Um, you know, I'm now a member of the Bar Association. And association, I suppose, is, a, is another oldie worldy term. But, you know, if you called... The Australian Macadamia Society, the Australian Macadamia Association. Unfortunately, the abbreviation would be AMA, and we'd be confused pretty quickly with the Australian Medical Association, and um, we don't want their incoming mail. So, guys, uh, love to hear from you. Um, like I said, I'm keeping an open mind at this stage, and I haven't formed a, a, a positive view. It's something that does need discussion. Uh, outside of the, the material from the AMS, which of course is all promotional one way for the change. Is there a voice against it? Um, let me know anyway. It'd be lovely to hear from you. I'll bring you another video soon. There's lots happening. Like I said, there's a harvest coming up. Uh, I've got a slash down the paddock where my new macadamia is going to be planted, very belatedly. And, um, and um, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to bring you some footage of some of that. And so far the weather looks like it's going to be holding and I'm really looking forward to that. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you soon.